We are going on a journey, a journey through time, along a canal built two centuries ago to carry coal and iron. The Swansea Canal, when built, covered a distance of some 60 miles, running along the Tawe Valley over five aqueducts, through 36 locks, to the busy port of Swansea. This sunken barge at Anismaidwi, an iron-framed boat with timber bottom and sides, is the only surviving Swansea barge. These members of Manselton Sunday School were charged tuppence a head for a trip to Anis Tawe. The date, 1929. The decision to build a canal was influenced by a number of factors. The absence of a good road up the Tawe Valley, the growth of collieries that needed good transport to the river wharves for their coal exports, and the passing in 1791 of an act to improve Swansea Harbour. As Swansea's wise sons find the sea is so large, though it will carry a ship, it will not carry a barge. They've wisely determined to cut by its side a narrow canal where small vessels may glide. At Swansea, the unloading facilities were improved as trade grew. The end of the canal lay well above the river level. Coal and other cargo was unloaded from the boats on raised embankments into tram road trucks, carried a hundred yards to the river wharves and tipped into waiting ships. This old ordnance survey map shows the proximity of the canal to the River Tawe. Industries grew along the canal like the Havod and Morva copper works with their own canal docks inside the works. Sadly, the Havard Works closed in the late 70s, although parts of the Morava Works have been listed as ancient monuments. This is how the works looked in the 1920s, with the abandoned barge no longer used, materials coming by railway. At Landor, the open hearth methods of steel making was pioneered in the canal side laboratory of William Siemens. This part of the route abounds with the names of the industries. Rose Copper Works, Morriston Spelter and Forest Spelter. It was along this section, there being no locks, that a canal tug was used to tow 18 to 20 barges in a row. At Clydech, the canal reappears and supplies water to the Mond Nickel Refinery. This footbridge, Pont John, allowed coal miners to cross the canal to go to work for a price, one penny a day. Much has changed over the years, but this aqueduct still carries the canal over the lower Clydech River. The British Waterways Board are the owners of the canal today and have three permanent staff based at Clydech who carry out essential routine maintenance of the waterways and its structures. Led by canal foreman John Hutchins, who has worked on the canal for over 35 years, the team have plenty of jobs to do all the year round. at Trebanos, part of the Coed Gwilym Canal Park, where Llyw Valley Borough Council license a mile of canal for canoeing. The half mile between Trebanos and Ponta Dawe has been filled in long ago, but hopefully it will be restored to waterway again in the future. Ponta Dawe once had a thriving tin plate industry. Would you believe it? The roof of the White House in America was roofed using the turn plates made at Parsons Tin Plate Works. William Parsons also built St. Peter's Church. 
Herbert Street Bridge, Ponte Dalwe, today favours the motorist. This was the old brewery built in 1837. It too used the canal, transporting beer by barge to canal side pubs. This section of canal has recently been restored by Llew Valley Borough Council with grant aid from the Valley Initiative Scheme and technical advice and help from the British Waterways Board staff. Another obstruction, Anis Kalanin Bridge. Ponte Dawe Foundry has been operating since 1865, one of the early canal users, whose materials, pig iron and coke, came by canal boat. Maidwi Isa Bridge, one of the early canal bridges taking its name from the nearby farm through whose land the canal runs. This maintenance barge at Anis Maidwi is a rare thought of a boat on the Swansea Canal. We'll see more of this later. In the boat is a local character, George Holloway, known as Georgie Canal. Thankfully, this same bridge still stands today, and this made we Ganol Bridge, known locally as Pont Nicholas, after Captain Nicholas, who farmed and this made we Ganol in the 1920s. Nine and a quarter miles from Swansea. The mile posts were restored by the Canal Society with help from Shell Oil. Winecoid Branch Canal, well, the site of it anyway, one of five major privately owned branch canals. This one was for the Anis Kedwen Ironworks. Locally, it was called Crane's Canal, after its engineer, George Crane, who constructed it in 1828. The British Waterways Board and the Canal Society will be restoring this in the very near future. Remember that maintenance barge? Well, here she is again, a rotting hulk, but not for long. The Canal Society has, over the years, excavated barges like this. The Dorian at Clidech Wharf was found as early as 1949 by enthusiast Ian Wright. Also, more recently, Canal Boat Number 56, excavated at Clidech Sawmills, an old timber boat built about 1880, it was donated to the Swansea Industrial and Maritime Museum. A typical Swansea Canal work party are seen here excavating the maintenance barge at Anis Maidwi. They meet most Sundays in winter months to work on many different projects on the canal. No task is too daunting for a really committed member. This area was overgrown until the society dredged the basin between the two locks.
The team at Anis Maidwi rebuilt a lensman's hut, laid footpaths, repaired bridge abutments, constructed a bridge and cleared the locks of trees and vegetation. Since 1981, the Swansea Canal Society has carried out many large restoration projects on the smallest of budgets, all the heavy back-breaking work being done by a loyal band of regular volunteer workers. The Society has, over the years, received a number of Prince of Wales awards in recognition of the thousands of hours of volunteer work put in to restore areas like this. This is lock number 12 at Anis Maidwi. It's hard to believe that this was once busy with barges, carrying iron, tin plate, and even pottery from the little known Anis Maidwi pottery works nearby. Tin plate was carried over this bridge, Bryn Bridge, so called after the Bryn Tin Plate Works, built on the site of the former pottery works. White china clay from Cornwall came to Swansea by boat, transferred to canal boats for the journey to Anismaithby. The small pottery alongside the canal was in production from 1844 to about 1874 where good quality glazed china jugs and plates in a variety of colour designs with a glazed finish were produced. Thousands of pieces of pottery shards were recovered by society members when a land reclamation scheme took place on the site. Over 30 patterns were found, many named pieces previously undiscovered and 23 potter's marks. We recovered 35,000 pieces of pottery at the site and these marks were on the, on the back of the broken shards. Some were impressed, such as these, YMP, and this we do pottery. Others were written in various glazes on the backs of the, of the shards. With six different designs of the willow pattern, modern looking cowl bowls, blue and white jugs, children's nursery rhyme plates and mugs, the range of designs and patterns is immense and has been carefully listed by the Society's Secretary, Clive Reed. Just across the road from the local pub can be found the former pottery owner's house, built around 1848. In contrast, nearby Curtis Row, built to house the pottery workers. The Nant Cum Dee Aqueduct carries the canal over the Cum Dee stream alongside the site of the former pottery. The area has recently been re-landscaped and new trees have been planted. The stone abutments seen in the foreground carried a bascule bridge like a drawbridge this connecting the local stone quarries with the LMS railway running up the Swansea Valley. The canal above Anismaidwi has become a nature reserve in the care of the West Glamorgan County Council. Many species of wetland plants, wildflowers, birds and insects have been identified in the reserve and the council gained an award for managing the land in this beautiful part of the Swansea Valley.
Fountains Hall at Estalavera, built in 1796 as the residence of the Swansea Canal engineer. Today it's a pity that it is somewhat forgotten and neglected. The three-arched Turk aqueduct at Estalavera, the largest structure on the Swansea Canal. It took four years to build and was the first aqueduct in Britain to use waterproof cement to seal the bed of the structure, rather than the more usual peddled clay. It carried the canal out of Glamorganshire into Breconshire. Some relics from the Estalavera ironworks, tram wheels and rails from the tram roads, tin plate brand stamps, tools used in the construction of the canal barges, all serve to remind us of the former industry in the area. Cannonballs made Dennis Kedwin. An ironworks had been on the site since 1612, but it was much later that David Thomas and James Palmer Budd of Estalavera Ironworks perfected the process of using anthracite coal to smelt iron ore. Sadly, the remains of the old furnaces were cleared away, but the arches still survive at this important industrial site, cared for by Brecknock Borough Council. With the closure of the Estalavera and Anis Kedwin ironworks, this final section of the canal was abandoned. This map shows the locks that led to the canal terminus at Abercrav Basin. Brickworks and ironworks were served by the canal at Abercrav. Lam and Flag Bridge. This tunnel was the only one on the canal. Now sadly no more like Lock 36, the topmost lock on the Swansea Canal. In the five years the Canal Society has been formed, a great deal has been achieved on the Swansea Canal. The aims of the initial founder members was to ensure that the Swansea Canal, which was considered the one of the oldest and most important industrial archaeology remains in the valley was preserved and kept for the future of the valley. We achieved that initially by enthusiastic work parties, talking to the local authority, to the British Waterways Board, and slowly uh, a lot of work has been carried out on the canal. To date we've achieved the redredging of the canal for the first time for many, many years. The locks at Anismidu are now uh, clear. The basin at Anismidu has been worked on. We've rebuilt lock keepers' huts. We've carried out some flower planting and some planting on the canal, and we've slowly developed the canal as uh, a means of tourism. Well, I think it's significant we're standing here at Swansea Marina, which we hope in the future will be the center of the nucleus of the canal. Uh, and a canal system of waterways in the South Wales and the Neath Valley. The, the aims of the society are to work towards these ideals and we've called uh, a project of ours towards 1994 which is the bicentennial of the Swansea Canal and it would be nice to think that in 1994 that people could leave here the uh, port of Swansea and Swansea Marina and travel by canal barge up through the little villages of the Swansea Valley up to the through the coalfield area up to Anismidu and Silvera and, and who knows in the future beyond thus linking the old industrial and coal mining areas of the valley back with the with its home port of Swansea. Mm -hmm.